I have a crazy little thought I want to give you. Over in Marietta, Georgia, Marietta, Georgia, just down the road, there was a mother who had two daughters, true story. And she used to tell them a story about an elf that she made up. She made a little doll and a little elf like this, and she would set it up on a shelf. And she told them the story of that shelf or that elf is always watching them, whether they're good or they're bad. And while they sleep, he takes a nocturnal journey to the North Pole and tells Santa Claus and comes back. And when he comes back, he's always in a different place than he was when they went to sleep. And when they wake up, they're amazed. And you say, well, why do I care about that? Well, just hold on. I'm the preacher. You're not. Just hold on. <laughs> and she had this idea, told this story to her children every Christmas as a family tradition. And every morning they would wake up and sure enough, the little elf, and that was proof that he had gone on a journey and come back. And uh, to make a long story short, it became a phenomenon in 2005, a little mother down here in Marietta, Marietta hit it big. The two daughters grew up, became business-minded entrepreneurs. They built this little package with a book and everything in it called The Elf on the Shelf. And to make a long story short, it sells $10 million a year since 2005 off of that. See, you turn to somebody and say, I wish you were that smart to come up with that. Would you do that? $10 million a year off of the elf on the shelf. There's no elf watching you every day and with you every day, but you do have self with you every day. And I want to just talk about how that the world is all about self and maybe what could happen this Christmas is you could put self on the shelf. And you could find out that there's so much more to life than self, living a life of just all about self. The world tells us that it's about self-esteem, it's about self-awareness, self-confidence, self-image, all these things are fine. But when you begin to make all life about self, self-improvement, self-interest, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and if that wasn't enough, selfies. But the Bible talks about self import the Bible talks about self pity and self conceit and self importance and self will and self destruction. Religious people have an issue because they think it's all about self righteousness, self justification. I'm good, I've done this and I there therefore I deserve. But God's word says that it's about self-control, self-denial, self-examination, and self-sacrifice. In so many words, I want to change it just a minute and, and say that really Christmas is about put self on a shelf and let Jesus take the throne of your heart. Galatians 6 and verse 3, for if a man thinks himself to be something He's deceiving himself. If you're eaten up with your own ego, your own pride, and you think that everybody has a problem and self is great, the Bible said, if you think yourself to be something when you're not, you're deceived. Romans 12 and verse 3 said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Put self on the shelf. Humble yourself. You need a savior. You need forgiveness. You need God's help. You need God's life in your family. You need Jesus. Put self on the shelf or you'll live a selfish life. Second Corinthians 10 says, we dare not compare ourselves among ourselves. You want a miserable life? Compare yourself all the time with other people. Compare yourself with what they have. Compare yourself with what other people are doing at Christmas and what you're not doing and what you don't have. And you'll, you'll live a miserable life. That's why you need to put self on the shelf and put Jesus as the center of everything and then purpose and meaning and true, 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 
destiny kicks in when Jesus is Lord of your life. Luke 9 said, and it sums up everything that I want to say here in this last five minutes of my talk. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, put himself on a shelf, put his will on a shelf, put his dream on a shelf and let me be Lord. When you say thy kingdom come, you're saying my kingdom go and you put self on a shelf and you die to your will. That's what it means to know Jesus. That's the message of Christmas is if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Give up like Moses did. Empty yourself like David did. He emptied himself like Noah did. He emptied himself like Mary did at that first call of God. She said, not my will, but thine be done. Nevertheless, be it unto me according to your word. And she put self and self reputation and all the plans of her life. She put it on a shelf and God used her mightily for his glory. Self is in charge when Jesus is not the center of your life. I would like to say to Christians, put self on a shelf when it comes to, to, to your standing with God. Don't judge yourself. Don't write the end of your story because you mess up because this has never been about us performing perfect. And if I work so hard, I deserve God's love. When it comes to receiving salvation, you have to put self on the shelf. I got all these issues and I still have these problems in my life and these things, but it's not about me earning salvation. So you put self on a shelf and you receive the finished work of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed. It was it was precious blood because it washes away all of your sin and you don't earn a bit of it. When you understand that, it sets you free. Don't make it about what people think of you. Don't make it about what you think of you. Put self on a shelf. All that matters is what Jesus thinks of you. And when you understand what I'm preaching about, the apostle Paul said, every day I die daily. And when you put self on a shelf, marriages are being destroyed because it's all about self. But when you begin to live one for another and put self on the shelf, when families are willing to reconcile only because there's been trouble in the family and fights and offenses in the family. And as long as self is in control, self won't humble. It's self won't be humble. Self won't ask for forgiveness. Self won't reach across the aisle. Self is always about me and how wrong I've been done. But Jesus is the model. The whole story of Christmas is Jesus was King of glory. As a matter of fact, Philippians chapter two said that he being in the form of God, verse six, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Do you understand what that means? That means he was not some God junior and the, the, the father and the Holy Spirit were the top executives and he was a junior executive. He was equal. He was God, mighty, powerful God. And he put himself on a shelf and walked down the star studded steps of glory to a barnyard in Bethlehem. He put all of his majesty and millions of angels and power and glory. And Colossians said that all the earth is held together by the power of this king's word. And he put it all on a shelf and came down as a baby born in a manger. And when you understand what Philippians is saying, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Put all of that power, possession, position, put it all on a shelf and became a servant 
took on the form of a servant, was made in the lowly likeness of man and being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient. It got worse after being born in a stable, after being a nobody for 30 years except a hardworking carpenter. Nobody ever knew who he was. He's just so, he put self on it. How long, how long? For 30 years, he does nothing. No miracles, no healing just puts all that on a shelf so that he could feel what you feel, so he could hurt like you hurt, so he could feel shame and pain and anguish and fear. And then it says in Philippians, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now watch, and I conclude with this. When you put self on the shelf, when you stop living for self, when you stop making life about you, me, myself, and I, and you put self on the shelf and you make Jesus the Lord of your life, watch what happens in verse nine. Wherefore, that means because he put self on the shelf and humbled himself, watch, wherefore, God has highly exalted him. If y'all don't shout on this, I'm going to get my money back rebate. <laughs> Come on now. Are you ready? That's, that's prepping you for a response. Are you ready? Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, that's it, I want to hear it, at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth and of things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now shout if you believe the gospel. Shout if you believe the gospel. Shout if you know it changed your life. Shout if you know everything changed when Jesus comes. The tempter's power is broken. Woo, hallelujah. I'm saved. Hallelujah. My name is written in the book of life. Oh, my past is pardoned. My present is powerful. My future is promised. Nothing can separate me. From the love of God. Just stand up on your feet. You're in a Pentecostal church, whether you knew it or not. We don't even have to light our candle. We got enough fire. It'll just boom. Come on. So I conclude. The greatest gift you could give Jesus on his birthday is yourself. The greatest gift you could give is your family is to put self on a shelf and make Jesus the Lord of your life. The greatest gift you could give your parents is to put self on a shelf and make Jesus Lord. The greatest gift you could give your husband is not a, not a bass boat or whatever it is. That would be a close second. Some of you men are... But the greatest gift you could give your husband is you put self on a shelf and receive Jesus. The greatest gift you could give your wife is she could actually walk out of here with a new man, a better daddy, a better husband. Not a perfect person, but a person who truly wants Jesus to transform and make him more like Christ. Put yourself on a shelf. Humble yourself. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior this Christmas and everything will change. Many of you believe that? So I'm, I'm sensitive tonight at all of our campuses that there are people who are here. And for many of us, it's another candlelight service. But for somebody, it's where the light is going to pierce the darkness that you've been in. I really feel 
the darkness is trembling. The darkness of despair and discouragement and depression and hopelessness is trembling because Jesus is here. Emmanuel is here. God with us is here. And so tonight, as we sing these songs and we light these candles, you can whisper a prayer right where you're standing. I'll, I'll lead you in that in just a moment. But let's just worship. Let's just lift Jesus high. And I'm going to light this candle. And I want my family. I'm so blessed to have my almost all my family missing two ones coming in tomorrow and their family Chris and Ben and their family and Courtney and Tyler their f babies are sick tonight but got some of my family Sharice y'all come on up all my family up on the stage I exalt thee I exalt thee I good. Lift your voice, everybody. Let's just worship Jesus in this place. That's what this service is about. Tell him. I
I want everybody to pray this prayer with me, knowing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish. Isn't that great news? When we die, we don't perish, but have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. So hold that candle up and pray this prayer. If you mean it from your heart, a miracle is going to happen in your life this Christmas. Everyone say, Lord Jesus, I believe the gospel. I believe you came born of a virgin. You were God in skin. You lived a perfect life without sin, but then you carried all my sin and nailed it to the cross. The blood you shed has cleansed me. It power washes me of all my sins, past, present, and future. I am forgiven. I can't earn it. I can't deserve it. I just receive it. By faith, in Jesus' name, I believe you rose again. And because of that, I have eternal life. I receive you, Jesus. I receive the light into the darkness. Let me carry the light into my home to my family and into all the world. I receive a new light in my soul. I'm a soul on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen. And praise the Lord. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.